Is Julius Caesar an effective counter against Attila Takeda in Rise of Kingdoms? Guys, stick around because I think some of you may want to see these results. What's going on guys? It's Omniarch. Cheers. Yeah, I ran out already. I've been drinking a ton of iced vanilla lattes lately with oat milk and I'm honestly addicted. But my first world problems aside, this video is important because a couple of weeks ago, I made a video talking about the six worst legendary commander investments in Rise of Kingdoms. And a lot of people commented on that video saying that I was wrong about Julius Caesar because you can counter Attila Takeda with an Alex Caesar. Now, if like one person said this, I would just write it off and be like, ah, you're, you're wrong. You don't know what you're talking about, whatever. But a couple of people were saying this, right? there was enough comments on that video saying that I was wrong about Caesar that I wanted to do the testing myself. So first off, where did people get this idea that Alex Caesar is a counter to Attila Takeda? Well, about seven months ago, Legend Roni made a video talking about counter rallies to Attila Takeda. And in that video, he was testing different pairs and he did an Alex Caesar counter to Attila Takeda in the open field to see if maybe it could be used as a counter rally. And this is what people were saying. They were saying, you got to check out Roni's video. He tells you how you can use Caesar with Alex to counter Attila Takeda. And I respect Roni as a content creator and as a Rise of Kingdoms player. He's an absolute legend. His name is, is no lie. Great player, great content creator. And I definitely respect his opinion, especially when it comes to like talent builds and stuff like that. He's, he knows what he's talking about. Okay. And I'll try to remember to link the video down below. Definitely go ahead and watch it. Definitely go ahead and subscribe to him if you're not already. But the TLDR is that he had Alex primary Caesar secondary 240,000 T5 infantry versus 210,000 T5 cavalry with of course expertise to tell it to One thing to note there is that his Caesar is expertise, right? That's how you have 240,000 units in that army because his fourth skill was at five. And it's also worth noting that his Alex had full purple gear, his chest weapon, gloves and legs were all special talented and he had a Delane's amulet with a silent trial on his Alex. And honestly, Honestly, when I saw this, you know, of course he won, right? The Alex Caesar beat the Attila Takeda in the open field. And I just don't think that that's a good justification for saying that Caesar isn't a bad investment, right? Remember, that was the original point of my video was to say, hey, if you're a free to play or a low spender, Caesar is one of the worst investments that you can make, right? And a lot of people were saying, oh, you're wrong because look at, at Roni using him with Alex to beat Attila Takeda in the open field. And honestly, I don't think that that test is a good enough test to justify investing in Julius Caesar, right? Because I personally think that there's some flaws in that test. Now, first off, you know, Roni's justification for testing was to see if you could counter rally, right? And there's no reason for any free to play or low spender to counter rally an Attila Takeda with an Alex Caesar, because what are the odds that a free to play or low spender is going to have an expertise Caesar and an expertise Alex, just like Roni does. I think the odds are really, really low. And the point of my video was to talk about open field fighting, right? Open field fighting with legendary commanders. And the reason that I think the test wasn't very good is because obviously Alex Caesar is going to win because he brought 30,000 more troops. I mean, duh, right? Duh, of course you're gonna win. You have way more troops. So what I wanted to do is to see how Julius Caesar actually performs against Attila Takeda if he brings the same amount of troops, right? Because again, I don't don't think players, if you're free to play or low spending, are going to have this fourth skill at five. And if you're a free to play or low spender, bringing more troops in the open field means that if you get swarmed in a non-testing scenario, you have more troops to lose. You have more troops going to your hospital. Remember, testing is a one-on-one, -on -one, but real fighting in the open field is not going to be like that. So for the first battle, I had me versus Combat Panda. Shout out to Panda. You guys have probably seen him in my live streams and things like that. And here's the set up for the first battle. Neither of us are using any pieces of equipment that affect stats in any, any way. We have the same KVK tech because we are in KVK. We both left our Alliance. We have the same VIP buffs. We neither of us had a title obviously. And we both used talent builds for our armies, just like Roni did in his video, because that's how things are going to be in real fights, right? You know, you could test them without talents to get more consistency, of course, but real fights are going to have talent builds, right? And I think that that matters. So for the first battle, what we saw was a slight victory for my Alex Caesar, right? It was a slight victory, which was nice to 
Tennessee. I had 25,000 troops remaining, nearly 12,000 severely wounded. For the second test that we ran here, everything was the same except we removed our city skins because my city skin gave you health, whereas I believe his city skin gave you attack, and I just feel like health is a better stat. So we ran the test again, and this time I had about 18,000 units remaining with a little over 12,000 severely wounded. So Panda did a little bit better here with removing the city skins, which is nice to see. And for the third test, I discovered that his talent build wasn't what I thought was optimal, right? So I gave him one of the talent builds from my website, riseofkingdoms.org to put on his Attila and the outcome was better for him, but I still ended up winning. I had about 15,000 units remaining, 13,000 severely wounded. So in all three tests, we can see it's pretty consistent that Alex and Caesar is going to beat Attila Takeda in the open field, even if you have no points in Caesar's last skill. So a 5500 would be able to emulate this result. So you might be thinking, Omniarch, there you go. See, we told you Alex Caesar beats Attila Takeda, to which I would say, of course he does because infantry beats cavalry. But remember, the point of the video was that Caesar is a bad investment. I think he's a bad commander inherently. And so what I wanted to do was see how does Alex and somebody else pair up against Attila Takeda? So for the fourth battle, I did an Alex Isongye because that's a very common pair that everybody recommends men's using, right? If you're a free to play or low spender, pretty much everybody says expertise YSG, expertise your Alex next, and you're going to have a really powerful open field pair. And I also think this is a fair comparison because Alex is a early game commander and he also doesn't give you any buffs to infantry. All he brings is big skill damage and a chance to gain some rage, which is good. Now I want you guys to keep in mind that for the third fight that we did with Alex and Caesar, it was a pretty close fight and it lasted 197 turns. It was a very long battle and Attila Takeda does pretty well in long battles because they do healing over time. And with everything else the same, my Alex and Isong Ye performed much better than the Alex and Caesar. If you look, the power loss is pretty much the same and the severely wounded units are pretty much the same, but the difference is in the units remaining. I had about 30,000 units remaining, which is twice as many units remaining as I did with my Caesar. And the the reason for this is because it only lasted 137 turns. It lasted 60 fewer turns because Yi Songye is so good at chunking down the enemy. So I didn't want there to be any flukes, so we tested it again with the exact same setup, and this time it lasted only 109 turns. I had 42.5 thousand units remaining, and it performed much, much better. Now, since this was a pretty big difference from the previous round, we tested it again, of course, and this time it performed slightly better than the first round but definitely worse than the second round, which just goes to show that there's some randomness involved when using talent builds. And of course, Isong has the 10% chance to gain more rage. So I think for the second round with Isong, we just got really lucky with Isong's second skill and we were popping off a ton more skills. But even still, this third round was very similar to our first round with Isong with 31.7 thousand units remaining and 12,000 units severely wounded. So what do we learn from these testings? Well, we learn that Alex Caesar does beat Attila Takeda in the open field, but why would you do it, right? Why would you do it? Because the battles are going to last much longer, which leaves you exposed to increased risk of being swarmed by the enemy, by other enemies in the alliance that you're attacking. And the real reason that you're beating Attila Takeda isn't because Julius Caesar is there, it's because infantry beats cavalry inherently. Sure, Caesar gives you some stats with his primary skill and you get some bulkiness and things like that. But why on earth would you invest in Caesar when you can invest in somebody like e Song Ye, or Alexander himself, or other legendary commanders that are just going to perform better. Everybody knows that commanders like Guan Yu and Harold are just going to be better investments when it comes to countering Attila Takeda in the open field. And this is self-evident because they buff infantry more than Caesar ever can. So for those of you who are saying that Alex Caesar is a counter to Attila Takeda, I would argue that, you know, maybe, sure, I guess, if you want the battle to take a long time and you want it to drag on and you want to increase your risk of getting swarmed. But if you want to do things the right way, I would say beat Attila Takeda with good command. 
matters. And unfortunately, Julius Caesar is not one of them. Guys, if you found this video useful or entertaining or informative or anything like that, make sure you drop a thumbs up on it. It helps this video get shown to other Rise of Kingdoms players here on YouTube. And if you're new around here, subscribe to the channel and click that bell to be notified the next time that I upload a Rise of Kingdoms video. Comment down below any questions you have for me about this testing or about Caesar or anything like that. I try to respond to as many comments as I can. As always, my social media links are in the description below. So make sure you follow me over there on Instagram, Discord, Facebook, Twitter, all that stuff. It's always down below as well as a link to download Rise of Kingdoms absolutely for free for your PC. It's a program called Blue Stacks, and it's my favorite way to play Rise of Kingdoms, especially in open field war scenarios like KVK. Having Rise of Kingdoms on, on a bigger screen is just going to be a much better experience. And like I said, it's free. If you don't like it, you can always uninstall it, but definitely give it a try. With that being said, guys, thank you so much for watching. This has been Omni Arc. I will talk to you guys again soon. Peace.